Hello and welcome to TVS Correspondent, the show where we take a look at what's happening in the U.S. and around the world. I am Razi Ahmad, and with me is our correspondent for the United States of America, now in Washington, D.C., Alfian Zain. Alfian, it's great to see you again. How are you doing today? Great to see you too, Razi. I hope you're fantastic as I am today. I'm doing great as well. Well, great. Let's get going. Uh, we have uh, received reports that... Uh, Eight people were killed on Friday night and hundreds of others were injured in a stampede during the opening night of a popular weekend music festival in Houston, Texas. Alfian, could you give a recount of what happened during this incident? Certainly, Razi. Uh, this stampede occurred at the third annual Astro World Festival, a sold-out concert event uh, featuring multiple acts. According to uh, the Houston Fire Chief Samuel Pena, the worst of the incident be began around 9.15 p.m. when uh, the rapper Travis Scott came on stage. Uh, the crowd of approximately 50,000 uh, concert goers uh, began to compress toward the front of the stage. People began to panic and scream in terror as they were crushed uh, against each other. Uh, they began to fall out, uh, become unconscious. The organizers, Rapper Travis Scott and Life Nation stopped the show uh, when it was apparent that multiple people were hurt. While well, the most deadly moments happened after 9.30 p.m., Pena said more than 300 patients total had been treated at a field hospital since the event uh, began, including people who were hurt during the worst moments. While names of the casualties weren't known, Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner said uh, the victims' ages ranged from 14 to 27 years old. Houston Fire Department and uh, Harris County medics uh, transported 25 people to the hospital. 17 of these uh, patients were taken away during the worst of the ordeal. Several people fell down to the ground experiencing some sort of cardiac arrest uh, or some type of medical episode, and they had to have CPR performed on them. By Saturday afternoon, Mayor Turner said 13 people were still hospitalized, with five of those patients being under, under 18 years old. The rest of the weekend's planned performances were canceled, and the area, is, was, uh, the, the area was cordoned off uh, as a crime scene. That's, it. Well, that's really curious. Why was it cordoned off as a crime scene? Is there any speculation that there was a deliberate attack uh, involved, Alfiat? We don't know yet. Uh, we don't know that yet. Uh, it wasn't clear uh, yet what caused uh, the death or the injuries. Uh, Houston Police Chief Troy Finner shot down any early speculation about the multiple uh, fatalities uh, and insertion repeated by city and county leaders uh, during a Saturday afternoon briefing. He said there are a lot of rumors on social media, and he cautioned people not to buy into the rumors. Nothing else. Uh, nothing is off the table in terms of persons who were there, people who fainted, people who were transported. As far as a crowd surge, all of those things are being looked at. It's way too early to draw any conclusions. But while Finner joined others in cautioning the public from 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 the speculation, uh, he did confirm reports that someone may have in, uh, may have been injected with needle uh, during the melee. Uh, medical staff uh, who treated a security officer at the venue said the security uh, security guard uh, was reaching over to restrain or grab a citizen, and he felt a prick on his neck. The security guard lost consciousness and was treated with. Narcan, a drug used to combat the effects of opioid uh, overdoses. Investigators are still trying to locate uh, the security officer involved. Meanwhile, uh, Pena said investigators will review video of the scene and uh, look at how the venue was laid out and whether it had enough exit points. The investigation will explore what caused, one, uh, the issue of the crowd search, and two, what prevented people from being able to escape that situation, Razi? Has there been problems with Astroworld before? Well, during the same event, earlier in the day, numerous people were rushing through a VIP entrance, knocking over metal detectors, and sometimes other people, and ignoring security staff. At least one was injured in the afternoon rush 
Back in 2019, three people were trampled and hospitalized as thousands rushed to get into the festival. Whether this incident led to special precautions at this year's event, well, it's obvious that if they did, there weren't enough, Radzi. Yeah. Indeed, and uh, our hearts go to the families and all those impacted by what happened at uh, Astro World Festival. But we'll be right back on TVS Correspondent after a short commercial break. Stay tuned. And we are back on TVS Correspondent. Now, according to a new report from investigative newsroom ProPublica, at least 18 American billionaires and hundreds of other ultra-wealthy individuals receive federal COVID-19 stimulus checks, even though the payments were aimed at helping poor and middle-income households uh, weather the pandemic's economic crisis. Now, that just seems really mind-boggling to me how a billionaire could qualify for a cash handout meant for the average American household struggling economically. Alfian, could you please explain how this absurdity is even possible? Yes, Razi, indeed. It is a ludicrous and absurd situation, but that is the reality of the American tax uh, system currently. Let me go through the uh, ProPublica report uh, to show you how this is possible. About 270 wealthy people received payments in the first round of stimulus checks directed by lawmakers in 2020, uh, despite having a total of $5.7 billion in an income. The report noted that these rich taxpayers received stimulus checks after tapping complex tax deductions to reduce their net income to less than zero, uh, qualifying them for the checks. Under the law, the full payments of $1,200 per single taxpayer and $2,400 for married couples were only available to single people earning less than $75,000 or couples with incomes below $150,000. Included among the billionaires who received stimulus checks are philanthropist George Soros worth $7.5 billion and financier Ira Rennert worth $3.7 billion. To be sure, the bulk of stimulus payments were directed to households that legitimately qualified for the checks, but the fact that billionaires received the aid underscores how differently the U.S. tax system works for the ultra-rich. The 270 wealthy people who got the checks most certainly didn't request their payments. The IRS automatically directed the aid to anyone it determined qualified by income. It may seem mind boggling, but that uh, a billionaire could qualify for a $1,200 check from a stimulus program with an income threshold of $75,000 per single taxpayer. But because these billionaires tapped write-offs, deductions, and other loopholes to minimize their incomes, they appear to the IRS to have net incomes of less than zero, making them eligible for the payments. Now, what is being done to reform the American tax system to prevent such loopholes from being exploited and make the ultra wealthy pay their fair share, Alfia? Well, the ProPublica report comes as some democratic, uh, democratic lawmakers are pushing for a tax on billionaires, arguing that the nation's wealthiest citizens should pay more as a matter of fairness. Uh, according to the Americans uh, for Tax Fairness Agency, during the pandemic, the collective net worth of America's roughly 700 billionaires surged by $2 trillion, thanks to a rise in stock prices and uh, the values of other assets. The billionaire's tax would place a new levy on asset gains, whether a billionaire has sold the asset or not. Under current law, a gain is only taxed if it is realized uh, when its owners sell uh, the asset and books the profit. Unrealized gains or stocks or other investments that rise in value and that the investor holds onto and leverage aren't currently taxed. 
Yeah, but still the finding that at least 18 uh, American billionaires received stimulus checks earmarked for middle income families reveals how differently the current tax system works for the wealthy. Now, could you boil it down to the basics of what this difference is, Alfia? Yeah, certainly. Most people pay taxes on uh, earned income, such as their salaries or earnings from gig work, uh, which is reported to the IRS on W-2 or 1099 statements. The ultra-wealthy, however, have a host of accounting tricks and deductions they can use to reduce their reported income, such as by using business losses to offset income. Uh, those valuable de- uh, those those valuable deductions uh, can effectively minimize their tax liabilities and apparently help them to qualify for stimulus checks. Quasi. That billionaires receive stimulus funds that were meant for middle class uh, uh, Americans show how ill-equipped the U.S. tax system is to deal with the ultra wealthy, whose income, driven mostly by business ownership is more protected than those who live on wages. As said by left-leaning think tank, the Institute on Taxation and uh, Economic Policy, uh, this disgrace shows why the United States need real tax reform. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Um, Alfian, as always, thank you for your insight and for your time. My pleasure as well, Razi. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching and uh, join us next week on TVS Correspondent. I am Rezi Ahmad with Alfian Zaini. Stay safe and bye-bye.